the Business Behavior Podcast. It's so good to see everybody. I hope everybody's logging on. We'll give them a few minutes. Thank you all so much for joining us this Wednesday. I know we're a week behind, but if you follow me on social media, you know last week we had an exciting time uh, in Washington, D.C., meeting with the National Newspaper Publishers Association. I had an opportunity to sit down with uh, civil rights leader, Dr. Benjamin Chavis, uh, and I asked him about the first time he actually met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I will share some of that uh, in a later broadcast. Uh, but today we are so excited. Uh, we are celebrating Mother's Day. Uh, moms everywhere, moms, auntie, mommies uh, like myself. Um, and today we have a wonderful guest uh, here with us. Uh, we will be spending a little time with Mr. McQueen, Lawrence McQueen, the textile king himself. Uh, who owns McQueen's uh, in Houston, Texan, in Houston, Texas on Almeda. He's a tailor and um, not to give too much away, but I'm going to have him tell you all about himself, his business and all that he's done uh, for over 18, almost oh, 20 years uh, in, the, in the textile industry and uh, being a tailor and how he's dressed uh, some of the best dressed and the hottest dressed men and women uh, in the Houston community. Welcome. Mr. McQueen, how are you today? Doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. You know, uh, here on the Business Behavior Podcast, our goal is to educate business owners um, and to bring on guests that can give them some insight, uh, not only about the highs of, of running a small business, uh, but but also some of those valleys and some of the uh, issues that, uh, that you face as a business owner, but how you have... Uh, withstood, especially during a pandemic. And today we're also going to talk a little bit about mothers and how um, uh, mothers, uh, your mother may have influenced the direction uh, that you went. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from, Mr. Point? I'm from the D. In the case you don't know, that don't mean Dallas. That means Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> Born and raised. Well, I'll but I'm now a Houstonian, been here for quite a while. Okay, and what brought, I think, you, what brought you here to Houston? Well, the the first thing that comes to my mind is I always follow my spirit and what it tells me to do. And it said, after I lived in Dallas for a stint, to come here to Houston to uh, continue my journey. So that is where I ended. Okay, and it's interesting because I've heard um, that Dallas is somewhat the fashion capital of the South. So did you learn some things about your craft uh, being in the Dallas community? Uh, I would say no. I've learned <laughs> a lot of things out. Uh, I'm uh, somewhat uh, self-taught. Uh, everything that I learned, I learned from reading. I learned from doing. Uh, I would like to say I saw a lot of that in my uh, family, but uh, I did a little bit because my I was always amazed at both of my grandfathers on my mother's and my father's side. Every time I went by the house, I was like, Grandpa, why you always got on a three-piece suit in the house just chilling? Uh, that's what we do, McQueen. We wear hats. We wear suits. And I was like, wow. And that, that was my – and I they were very sharp with, with what they uh, had on, and I admired that. So it was a, that was a – a road into it, if you would. And McQueen, I can definitely relate to that. My grandfather, uh, God rest his soul, Drew Hodges, Mr. Drew Hodges was the exact same way. My grandfather's loungewear was, <laughs> was, Absolutely. was, I mean, yeah, he, he was always dressed nice, nice uh, shoes, shine, and sitting in the house. And, and once he retired, it was interesting because he wore uh, polo shirts more often. Like he retired and moved to uh, moved to Florida, and so that was the thing. Because you know, people, you know, they golf a lot. So he he didn't golf, but he Absolutely. definitely wore the polo shirt. So I can definitely Absolutely. relate to Absolutely. that. Yeah, he he always he and my grandmother were always sharp. Uh, and I would say, grandmother, we're just going to the grocery store. I mean, full guard, um, hosiery and all. And I even remember my first time visiting them in Orlando was my. Uh, that was my graduation present. And I wanted to go to Daytona Beach. So we drove to Daytona Beach and my grandfather had on a, he had on a, a dress shirt, 
slacks and hard toe shoes. I said, Grandpa, you're not going to get in the water. He was like, oh, no, I'm leaving that for you. And he lounged on the beach just like that. So I, I know exactly what you're talking and, and about. You know, what you're talking you know about. what's really funny about that? And the, the movies in the early um, 20s, 30s, 40s, and I think from 50s, they went to the beach with a doggone suit on with mm -hmm. slacks and sweaters. I was like, what is that about? That just blew me away. Well, my, my grandfather certainly did that. And that, it's interesting that, that we have uh, similar stories that relates to that and, and how we, uh, you know, and how we dress. I've, I've always been the one, my friends would always say, oh, you so overdressed to be at a, at a football game? And I would always, I was always taught to dress the part. And I think uh, with the, the clo Agreed. your clothing line, you definitely uh, interact with a lot, of, uh, a lot of individuals from different walks of life. So tell me how that's influenced uh, your tailoring and, and what you do to dress your clients. Well, let's see. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, uh, I have a I have a God given talent. Um, I've been in this industry actually since 1989, mm -hmm. and uh, have persevered. Uh, uh, as the uh, word says, if the father provides a good, provides the dollars for you to be a good steward of it, uh, invest it. So when you have hard times, uh, you're able to uh, persevere through that as well. Um, and that's one of my um, uh, areas when I, my first job out of college was working for a brokerage house and as an assistant uh, to a broker. And I learned a lot there and that kind of carried on uh, as far as, you know, me learning how to invest. And of course, I read a lot and I have a couple mentors in the investment uh, industry that helped me uh, make investments. And, you know, we still uh, collaborate even now uh, doing things together 25, 30 years later. So uh, be a good steward of the dollars that our uh, that the father provides to you, uh, and try not to get caught up in things because there's so many th things are always going to be there. Buy you some real estate, buy a house, uh, and you'll find out in life that will last you a lot longer than clothing and cards and all that other stuff. Believe it or not. Mm. Good words of wisdom. Good, very good. Good words of wisdom. So uh, tell us, uh, we're talking, you know, we're coming up on Mother's Day. Tell us how uh, a woman in your life or your mom or your aunts may have influenced where you are today in, in your business. Oh, my God. I love my mom. I love my mommy. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, I, guess I, I guess I could say I'm a mama's boy because I was more uh, closer to my mom than my dad, but... Uh, both of them, uh, what I, my takeaway from living with them was that they were excellent planners. Uh, even back in the early uh, 60s uh, and 70s, when I was really growing up then, when I say planners, they, and you know, as I said, real estate, my mom and dad had rental property, even back then, uh, they owned uh, rental property. So, uh, and then they, said adjusted that my brother and I go to school in East Texas at Jarvis Christian College, small HBCU, quick plug, go go Bulldogs, JCC. Anyway, uh, anyway, so at the end of my four year uh, stint at Jarvis, uh, my mom and dad just wrote a check for that for the whole four years. Uh, uh, and that's because they planned. That was one of my best takeaways from my family that I love and I appreciate and I carry that on right now. As, and, and uh, as far as my mother is concerned, happy birthday, mom. Um, I mean, happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Hey, I was about to say, is it her birthday too? She gets two yeah. gifts. <laughs> happy yeah, Mother's Day. Be something. But um, the takeaway from my mom is that uh, what inspired me most about her and still today is that I, I love her energy, her laughter. That that feeds my spirit every time, and and she laughs very easily. She has a hearty laugh that sticks with me, uh, and she had a uh, very good fashion sense uh, as well. If I showed you some of the pictures of my mom and my dad, you'd be like, man, 
That is beautiful <laughs> stuff. Well, mostly my mom. My dad wasn't a big dresser. I tried to help him out as much as I could, but my mom, uh, she threw down. Mm, okay. Well, and so with that being said, you're now, you know, like you said, you've been in, in the industry for over 89, for, since 1989. So how, how did you, what made you decide to go from being, you know, working for a brokerage firm to actually starting your own business and being, um, you know, the textile king. And then also you started out with the ties, if I'm remembering correctly. You yes, that, that the is correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I started out um, as the tie guy, which mm -hmm. I still am the tie guy. I'll, I'll never uh, lose that. Um, but I, when I started with that, uh, hopefully long story short, I started going to a lot of the resale shops here in town, Goodwill, Salvation Army, and I bought the vintage clothing and I went to the colleges and I sold it to them. Uh, and eventually there was um, an evolution that occurred where I went from vintage to brand new clothing. I started going into markets in New York, Chicago, Canada, uh, mm -hmm. uh, South Carolina, various places where you can uh, get different things that aren't all over the place, as I would say. And, you know, I started doing vintage ties and I went to brand new ties. I love European, Italian things, uh, Italian uh, offerings because uh, the workmanship, the craftsmanship, the silks, they're a whole lot better compared to uh, uh, China and those places. So I, I love European. You'll find um, when you come to McQueen's at 4402 Alameda Road here in Houston, Texas, uh, you will see a lot of things. I, they're made in Turkey. They're made in Spain. They're made in Italy. I stay away from China. China does mm -hmm. good stuff, but uh, I love the European uh, market, and it's not as uh, prevalent as the chi Chinese things. Uh, so did I answer your question? You did, and I was going to say thank you for sharing that because uh, here on the Business Behavior Podcast, we really uh, try to provide knowledge and information to small businesses and nonprofit organizations on how – uh, they can, you know, t uh, tips and tricks of the trade. And it's good to hear how you have, um, you've maintained since 1989 and starting, and you mentioned uh, being self-taught, reading, and that is so key in keeping yourself engaged in what's going on in that particular, uh, in that respective area, as far as uh, reading books and, and knowing the latest fashion and the, the types of materials and things like that. So education is really important. And that, that's what I took away um, yeah. And, and and to that, um, uh, I love fabrics and I learn fabrics when I go to market. Uh, there's an organization called CTDA, uh, which is a custom tailors uh, direct association, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, we they have a lot of seminars to teach fabrics, to teach what Super 120s fabric is, uh, uh, thread counts, uh, uh, two plies. Two ply cottons, there's so many variables in the arena. How many ounces is it? Is it eight ounces? Is it 10 ounces? Is it 12 ounces? Mm -hmm. uh, the ounce determines uh, what uh, weight it is and what, uh, if it's for summer, if it's for fall. Uh, so anything in like 11 or 12 ounces, that's for winter fabrics. Anything in the six to eight, nine ounce, that's for tropical weather like Houston. So that's what I focus on here too, especially when you come for my fabrics. It has to be all year round because when this blistering hundred degree heat comes, it's going to be on. And I do tons of linen, seersucker. It's spring, summer, y'all. Color. Let's go. I was going to ask you about that because we had a, a brief conversation a couple of weeks ago about the hats, and I noticed that in the store you had. Um, the I don't want to misquote the fabric, but what what are the fabric of those hats, and what what's the fabric that we should be wearing like right now with, with the heat that well, we're you know that we deal with in Houston? Well, believe it or not, uh, straws are of course what's going on during uh, spring summer, like from now mm -hmm. till probably uh, September. You could wear a straw hat, but even for right now, they're doing lightweight felts, which are still lightweight felt wool hats, which are still uh, a hat, a brim that you can wear right now. So if oh. somebody buy you a lightweight uh, brim, uh, a felt brim, you can wear that right now. You can wear the straws. Panamas. 
Look at that. Magnificent. Nice tight, nice tight weave on the straw. That's what you want to look for. This is one of my favorite headlines, Bailey. Bailey of Hollywood, they do wonderful brims. I like brims. I like the terminology brim as opposed to hands. Okay, and we have one question, uh, Mr. McQueen. Someone was asking, a, a lady was asking about uh, scarves. How about scarves? What, what, do, what do you look for as it relates to scarves? So scarves, so right now, very lightweight. Uh, you can use a, uh, God, what is that? Uh, they're doing scarves, of course, out of viscose rayon. You can do linens. You can do uh, 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 Viella, which is a very, very lightweight. It's, it's see-through. You can wrap around your neck. Mm -hmm. and it's still, uh, it doesn't make you hot. It's very lightweight. It's breezy. And, and people coming into my store, they ask me for scarves uh, periodically that you can wear right now. So that's one of the things that's trending as well. Mm -hmm. That's um, okay. And, and that fabric was called Vietta? Viella, V V I Y L E L L A. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that nugget with the scarf and the tie. Okay. So you might see me in a scarf uh, next week. Uh, with that being said, talk about some of the things. I know you're very uh, vested in the community. Most recently, I think you had an article uh, in uh, local Houston magazine, Vibe magazine, Vibe Houston. And then also, I saw uh, someone was uh, noted as best dressed couple in Houston. So tell us about your fashion sense. <laughs> Did I miss that article? You, you, you got to you got to keep me in the know, Kelly. Don't it, don't leave me in the hey, door. Hey, it came across my feed. I'm just saying, it came across okay. my feed. Let me. I'll have to look it up while you're talking. But I did get an email today that said yeah. you and um, Kim um, H. Kim um, Kim, yeah, Kim H. Who uh, also has accessories who handles you know the, the ladies part of the store at 4402 4, 4, Almeda in Houston, Texas, McQueen's. Um, mm -hmm. And she sent the link. Apparently, you all were captured, and uh, I believe it's a, a new blog by Joy Sewing, uh, who is great. a uh, writer in the area. And uh, you all were spotted as two of the hottest uh, fashionistas in the Houston area. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. Uh, okay, ah! <laughs> I'll have to what? send it to you. But yeah, so uh, what what do you? You know, how do you decide what you're going to put on? Because you are very fashion, you know, fashion forward, of course. And I mean, in any day, I can see see you in some jeans that have a little rips in them with a, a nice converse. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you always going to have a nice brim. What 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 makes you, you know, decide, you know, how do you decide what you're going to wear? Like, what, what does that look so, like for you in the morning? So with that, with that, um, one thing, one thing about fashion and dress, and this mm -hmm. is for guys and girls. Uh, Never, never be one dimensional in your dress. Mm -hmm. Mix it up. And I say that to say, uh, so my forte here at McQueen's is, and it has always been, uh, suits, are, suits are fine, but they're very one dimensional. You can't mm -hmm. take the jacket and wear a pair of, uh, or put a tie in the shirt with it. Well, actually, you can, but the better thing is to wear a sport coat mm -hmm. with jeans. Some sneakers or loafers, T-shirts, neck pieces is what's trending right now. A nice cross. You wear that with a T-shirt. You wear a nice blazer. You wear uh, some chinos, mm -hmm. jeans, sneakers, loafers, brims. This this is the look that's uh, happening uh, now. We do a. Um, I like looks that have longevity. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily into the the faddish part of the extra skinny suits because after a while you have a, a closet full of them and then that fad goes away and then <laughs> uh, you're like, oh my God, I spent all my money on all these tight suits and now they're not uh -huh. in. So I like longevity. Uh -huh. uh, I like a medium, uh, medium leg. Uh, like say, for instance, if you come in here and you want to get a custom suit, a lot of people want the skinny look. So if that's like, well, what happens when that look uh, heads oh, south? Yeah. Right, right. And, and you spent $1,500, $2,000 on the suit. It's like, oh, my God. So sometimes I, I do little things when I make a suit where I will, um, I'll leave extra fabric in the pant 
uh, in the side area in case they want me to let it out when that changes. So it can add, uh, I can make it look uh, up to date. So McQueen, how did you learn how to sew? Like what made you sit down at a sewing machine? So let me let me tell you this. The only thing that McQueen can sew with these hands, mm -hmm. uh, I know how to make a pair of trousers. That is it. I learned, mm -hmm. uh, from, I had some Vietnamese uh, mentors, mm -hmm. uh, but I learned how to do that. Uh, I was going to learn some other things, but I was like, oh my God, it's so te tedious work and it takes up a lot of time. And I was like, well, do you want to be sitting around uh, behind a sewing machine? So I do more, I do more styling mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than I do sewing because people come to me for advice. I had a gentleman come in my store today. He's like, I, I'm going to this uh, wedding. He showed me his pieces. He showed me how it was put together. I gave him some uh, tips. I told him what he had was actually excellent. But they mm -hmm. come to me for advice, and uh, I love to give it. I, I'm glad that people uh, will don't mind deferring to me because mm -hmm. they see what I do and how I do it. And you can always follow and see my looks on Instagram under McQueen's underscore HTX. When you have time and you'll see a lot of things that I post, a lot of things that I style for people as well. Okay. And then that's just for right now, but don't forget your website launches soon. You have a new website that's going to launch and it will allow, um, um, individuals to go to your website and purchase things directly from, uh, McQueen's uh, online. So we're excited about launching that and, and being a client for Hodges Communications Group. We've worked really hard the last uh, few weeks on getting that site up. So we're looking forward to launching that. Uh, oh, well, this week, actually, I think we'll be launching it on Friday. And that, that website is actually shopmcqueenhtx.com. So we're excited about that. Yay! And you know what, there, <laughs> and you know what, there's a wonderful firm I, I heard of that, that handles such great things. Wait a minute. She's right there. Yeah, it, it yeah. Hot, hot communication. She does all these wonderful things. I don't want y'all to think I'm doing it. That lady right there, magnificent. Thank you. And I have a very strong team, Alex, Alex Green Media, who is our consultant that's really yeah. working very closely uh, with you. Um, we have a couple of questions that I want to get to in the chat, and then I'm going to, uh, because we only have a few minutes left, and then I'm going to talk about uh, some of the events you have coming up. But uh, Jimmy Jones wanted to know if you carry any big and so big and tall sizes as well in the Queens. Well, the answer is yes. Uh, the other side to that is, even if I didn't, guess what I can do for you? I can build it. That means custom make it for you. So right. you, you, you can't lose when you walk through the door. If I don't have it off the rack, I can build it for you. Okay. And then the other question is, is not wearing white after Labor Day still a thing? Or can we ditch those old-fashioned ideals? Yeah, pull Keep the shovel away. out. Pull the shovel okay. out and, and start ditching that, yeah. Uh, so, we, so we can wear white before Easter and after Labor Day? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's not like the fashion police are gonna start blaring behind your car. It's like, oh, you got on white. And they don't do that. So, okay. and, and here's the thing: fashion is subjective. If that's mm -hmm. what you're feeling, mm -hmm. do it. I mean, it's your money. If you want to wear it, wear it. I mean, it's not like folks are gonna be uh, gawking at you. Oh my God, he has on white. <laughs> well, it, it, it's well, all subjective. Know. Yeah. Okay, well, that's an interesting perspective. So we can um, we can wear our white whenever we want to, ladies. Did y'all hear that? Because you know that that's a that's a huge deal. And I'm from the Midwest, so when we moved to Texas, and you know, it's you know, Texas, we're our own country. We do our own thing, not our own state, but our own country. And so when we moved here, but we were like, but it's so hot, you know. Why wouldn't you be able to wear a lighter weight of, weight of fabric, you know, in this heat? And why wouldn't you want to wear, you know, light colors and things like that? So it's pretty interesting. Um, so, linen, the dynamic. so linen is the the uh, fabric of choice uh, during spring, summer. I, I sell an awful lot of it. Another fabric that is real, uh, uh, if you are aware of it, is bamboo. They, you know what? They can they can take a bamboo tree and make a jacket out of it, and it feels like you're wearing nothing. Oh, wow. Now, uh, do, do you have any bamboo in the store? I'd love just to, to see what that's all about. That sounds, you got, you got me? Okay, I'll be by tomorrow. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk a little.
little bit more about Mother's Day with it being Mother's Day, uh, Mother's Day of McQueen's uh, Custom Tailor. You are actually doing something that uh, we talked about this. This is somewhat of a lost art form. You, you will actually having a lady come in this week. Tell us about that and what she's going to be doing that's, that's custom or tailor-made for individuals. So this weekend for Mother's Day, happy, happy Mother's Day, ladies. God bless you guys. Thank you for giving birth and holding us and taking care of us all of our years. Thank you so much. Uh, but uh, we are having Evie's, uh, say it with Evie, she makes custom note cards uh, that you can write your little uh, nothings on. Sometimes a personal touch is really what's great, but uh, the note cards that she makes, they're all done by hand. She puts uh, really neat notions on the outside of them, and then mm -hmm. you write on the inside what you would like to your thought, convey your thoughts to your mom, and you write it on you send it to her. She will be here uh, Friday from four uh, to seven, and then Saturday from one to seven. We also will have uh, sweets for those mm -hmm. who have a sweet palate. Uh, another lady will be here for the, the sweet tooth for mom. So stop at McQueen's on Almeda, 4402 Almeda Road, Friday from 4 to 7, and uh, Saturday from 1 to 7 to experience Evie's note cards and the sweet lady, for lack of a better word. Awesome. And then also this week, uh, this weekend, we'll be launching your new website. Uh, and across the country, you can go to his website and order Shop McQueen TX. ShopMcQueenHTX.com yeah. is the name yeah. of the new site, and we're very excited about that that site, um, powered by Hodges Communications Group uh, yeah. via Alex Green Media. We're very excited about that. So, um, McQueen, is there anything you would like to leave us with as, it, as we go into celebrating the Mother's Day weekend? Hey, guys. Uh, you know, Mother's Day is not just about not just about this particular day. Celebrate your mother every single day of the year as and tell your mom if you haven't told them mom i love you you don't have to just do it on mother just mother's day do it all the time and you know send her little things uh during the the year i send my mom things uh, all the time I say hey mom i was just thinking about you it shows you care and it, it, it's part of uh uh God's commandment to honor your mother and father and not just on Mother's Day. That's 24-7, 365 because I love my mother. Hey, Mom. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. McQueen. And we uh, look forward to hearing more about what you're doing in the community. And uh, we could talk another 30 minutes about your community involvement and community yeah. activities. But uh, from a nonprofit nonprofit perspective, you are a philanthropist. You you give a lot to different organizations, uh, not only locally, nationally, but internationally. So we thank you for your service. Uh, those like myself who work uh, in the nonprofit sector as well, uh, the note cards are always a good touch, a handwritten note card, but then also donors like you are so important uh, giving back to uh, the communities that you serve. So I thank you for all that you do in the community. Uh, to serve. And we have some great things coming up uh, during for Father's Day as well. And also uh, uh, yeah. we will uh, donate some info, donate, uh, McQueen's will donate some uh, portion of proceeds of sales uh, to a local nonprofit. We'll have more information about that as well. So we're very excited about our relationship uh, with McQueen's here at Hodges Communications Group, the Business yeah. Behavior Podcast. So again, Mr. Queen, thank you so much. And I know you all are having a successful um, event tonight. So tell Kim H we said hello and um, yes, and and stop by 4402 Almeda Road. We are having a jewelry show for the guys and the ladies to buy Mother's Day presents as well. And if okay. you can, let's see that little card right there. Uh -oh, really go over. There you go. There you go. We see McQueen. <laughs> McQueen's is up on the screen. Alex has the address up on the screen as well. So oh, she does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very that's good. What, that's, that's what we do. That, that, that's what we do. Y'all on top of y'all. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. McQueen. Have a great uh, event tonight. Thank you. 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 On behalf of my partner, Chandra Brooks, who could not be with us tonight, I forgot to tell y'all, she stuck me out by myself today. So when you see her on social media, you ask her why she was not here. 
but she actually has a huge event coming up this week um, with the nonprofit that she works for, the Mercer Society. Uh, they have their huge plant sale, and we'll have information about that on uh, Hodges Communications Group social media. So if you need to redo your yard, uh, some gardening stuff, come out uh, north side, north Houston, and to the Mercer Society this weekend. They're having their plant sale, so we'll have that flyer up as well. But that's where Chandra is today, and trust me, uh, she's not getting off easy by not being here. But uh, we uh, thank you all so much for joining us. And also, I have to thank our super producer, uh, Alex Green with Alex Green Media, who keeps us on our toes and keeps us all informed about all that's going on with Hodges Communications Group. So thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening and thank you for joining us. Good night.